Hello and welcome back to round two of the LLDS finals that we're holding here on the Friday of YCS London. Yes. That was a long one. That was we'll uh, uh, quite, the, quite the introduction. I was yeah. wondering if you were going to mess it up. I was ready to jump yeah. in and be like, no, Luke. We got a little thing as well. So Streamers and stuff. We are doing another spiral mirror match for round two yeah. um, in the hands of very talented players. Uh, we have Hayden Matthews versus Ericos Beck, is that right? Ericos Beck, yeah, I think that's right. Um, on his Cosi ID is Eric Beck, so I think we'll, we'll stick with calling him Eric Beck. That's what he's called on his Cosi ID. Sure. Um, yeah. So Hayden's from uh, Queensland, I think. I think it's Queensland. Yeah, he's from Queensland. So I, I know Hayden, his brother actually um, played in the World Championships when I was there in Florida. Yeah, I think Hayden was a chaperone, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Yeah, <laughs> for the event. Yeah. So now he's, uh, this time he's come here, and his brother is uh, chilly. I, I don't know if his brother's here with him no, or he's at home. I don't think so. I've not. I've not seen him. So no, probably not. So yeah, um, are these spiral lists pretty pretty standard? Uh, yeah, the spiral uh, actually kind of got the two variants here. We're looking at Hayden Matthews is not playing set rotation versus okay. Eric, who is. Okay. Uh, other differences is that Hayden is going with the triple or oh, uh, triple ciphering gamma okay. to interrupt those turn one hand traps. Okay. Whereas Ericos is not uh, not doing that. They are still maxing out on every other hand trap that's relevant, like free Ash Blossom, free Droll Lock Bird, Max uh, Maxi. Yeah. Uh, you're playing your Gofu. This one, uh, Ericos also has uh, Destarudo, um, whereas Hayden isn't playing that. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's pretty. Pretty standard uh, match yeah. between these two variants. Two subtle differences. But anyway, let's get over to the table and see if those small differences make any difference. Well, we know that the Spiral uh, Mirror Match is 50-50. Well, yeah. Technically, it's 100% in favor of Spiral, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, Spiral will definitely win. Uh, yeah. So... <laughs> That's a very safe assumption here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Eric, uh, Eric joining us from Greece as their LLDS representative. Uh, the opening hands we should be seeing loading in uh, any time now. Uh, from what I can make out, it looks like uh, I can't tell if that's a super agent. But he has got the machine duplication uh, Eric has in his opening hand. Here we go. There's a maxi super agent, super agent. Oh, okay. This is a little bit of a rough. Uh, it would be a little bit of a rough start if he, but he gets lucky with the agent guess, and now he actually has uh, a lot he can do here, because he can go yeah. into his double helix. He can then guess the top card correctly, go straight into um, a quick fix machine duplication, go from there. Uh, however, saying that, uh, Hayden has opened the uh, Cypher and Gear Gamma. Uh, we haven't seen that in a while. Yeah. Do you want to bring that up? Because that was kind of like the secret tech of YCS Dallas. Yeah, so here's Gamma. Um, so the dr the driver can be anywhere, is that right? Uh, you'd have to read the text. Uh, that's a little bit too small for me. <laughs> Let's have a look. So, yeah, it can be from anywhere. I was just thinking to myself, I, I, I had a feeling that dr the driver had to be uh, in your deck, but no, it's it's hand. So it's, that's a shame, because Hayden... Yeah, that's actually have driver in hand. crippling for Eric there, because he's just... Um, Try to resolve his double helix, and he's getting slammed by the yeah. So the we're gamma. Just figuring out whether he gets two uh, two cards from Maxi or one. Oh god. Yep, and then that's a hard shutdown on Eric's turn. Um, but Eric does have the Maxi to fire back with. Um, but looking at Hayden's no, no, hand, he played Max. Yeah, he played Maxi right there. Oh, he then. just he just yeah. Of course, he just bent it there. Sorry, uh, the. Information on the screen. Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries is huge, though. He has that that he drew off of the uh, Maxi to be able to take out the double helix and actually massively hinder uh, Hayden's uh, opening play. Yeah. He's oh, but he drew Blackwing Gofu as well. Wow. So even with the uh, Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries, Hayden has got live play. So that could have been really messy for him. Yeah. So I'm um, getting my stats up now. So the, uh, the two players here. So... Um, Hayden, so coming from Queensland, attended eight LLDS tournaments with a win ratio of 83%. Pretty big. This is absurdly high compared to the WCQ. Yeah, um, absolutely. Same for Eric Beck, actually, uh, attended eight LLDS tournaments with an 82% win ratio. 
it's some huge numbers. It's super difficult to actually get into the uh, LLDS finals. Uh, yeah. From the qualification, you're competing against every other player from even from other countries as well to get the top X into the top X number of points. Yeah. Um, so we've got some top level competition going on here. Yeah. Hayden's got a custom Karibo token there. <laughs> it's uh, kind of the artwork you put on the fridge, but uh, good job, Hayden. <laughs> Good job on your token. This is just a lot of stuff, right? This is, he's got so much, so many options here. Yeah, I guess uh, Eric is just deciding whether he pulls the trigger on his uh, Ghost Reaper and pull out yeah. double helixes. You have to now, right? Because otherwise... Well, the question is, is it double helix that you pull out or do you pull out the firewalls? Oh, he's revealing a Coral Dragon. Okay. Yep, pulls out the Coral Dragon. Interesting. Makes potential synchro play with Gofu less strong. Mm -hmm. But the double helix is still on the table. But we yeah. don't know what the top card of uh, Eric Eric's deck is. Ericos. Is it Eric or Ericos? I, I think, remember. I think er er well, his name's Eric in, uh, in KTS. Okay, so we'll go. We'll go with Eric. Sorry, because I, I just read it on the screen again. I'm like, yeah. Am I doing this wrong? Oh well, yeah, actually, well, on his deck list it says Ericos. All right. I think Eric or Ericos is. Uh, he wrote his name on his deck list. Let's go with Ericos then. Ericos. Eric. It's Ericos. And we are probably going to see going up to Borlo Dragon. Yep. Extremely powerful card from Circuit Break. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite cards in the entire set. Uh, I had a lot of fun uh, playing with this uh, back in the early development stages. Uh, and when it, when it actually it, uh, appeared in the Vrains animation, and Revolver, the uh, villain that actually plays this card, has to put on sunglasses to protect yeah, his eyes from his own that attacks. That is so cool. <laughs> that was the best part. I actually burst out laughing when that happened. He's just like, yeah. just one second, please. Put on the sunnies. Yeah, and then he he uh, blasted Playmaker. Like, the, the beam from Borrelow Dragon was so big that it blasted through the uh, the shield that they were in. <laughs> it's crazy. Spoilers for those who have not seen. I mean, yeah, Borrow shows up at some point. You don't need to worry about what we just said. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Just glaze over it. And there's three fires and direct attack coming in uh, with the Borrow load. Borrow is actually very tricky for the Spiral deck to deal with because it has uh, it has a quick effect which can reduce the attack and defense points of a monster uh, that can't be responded to. It can steal monsters that without targeting and um, put yeah. them on your side of the field to a link zone. And it cannot be targeted. And a lot of the Spiral decks are not playing things like Regeki or Dark Hole in their main decks yeah. um, to clear this out because it's massively ineffective in the Spiral Mirror. So Boral actually is extremely sticky. Um, and there yeah. you go. As, as shown there. Hey, here's, here's an additional hand trap. I've got absolutely no way of getting into this. I can't machine duplicate anything. I've got just yeah. a set. Boral load then takes over the game. Yeah. Very, yeah. very strong. And... I guess even if uh, you consider if the double helix would have been taken out from the Winter Cherries, um, he could have then made the Coral Dragon, then made something else. Eventually ended up in Borlo Dragon anyway and drew additional cards. So where do we go from here? Uh, Hayden uh, most likely coming in with the Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries into game two and evenly matched because he's not playing the uh, set rotation build. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's likely not going to be bringing in the Scoldings going second. Uh, Ericos, on the other hand, going first. He's got the Triple Sanctum and the Double Scythe. And he's got the Gamma as well. But uh, he does have he does have evenly matched, but you're probably not going to bring that in going first. No. But he's playing three copies. We've not seen anyone yeah, playing We're, we're going to be seeing the yet. Scoldings. Well, Hayden's actually also playing three copies oh, is he as playing well. Three? Oh, well, there yeah. you go. We've only seen two decklists so far. It's really hard going second because uh, in some ways when you're playing into the spiral field you just kind of have to pray they don't have um, like at least two of these cards from their uh, their side deck yeah um, just something, something super interesting about the uh, the road that uh, Ericos took to the to the LLDS finals here in London he actually played in the LLDS mega qualifier in in YCS Remini which Gave him a really decent amount of points. He 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 won that. In fact, he he was. Oh really? He had a hundred percent win ratio. Went seven zero, uh, in in that tournament. So that would have that would have probably bumped him up a number of points. 
That that would have been pretty nice. Uh, pretty nice, wouldn't it? You know, oh, just win seven 0 May as well play a few more and get my uh, ticket to London. Yeah. Well, you can. So Rimini was just a couple of months back. It actually, <laughs> strangely enough, uh, yeah, all of the other events that he's played, the LLDS events, were all after he won the the Rimini event. So of course, Rimini was the first one, right? Yeah, so what you said is probably quite right. He won that and then thought, uh, why not? Like, you know, let's give this a try. And then there you go. It made all the difference. All right, so we just have to see what these openers are. Um, Hayden hopefully not being forced to play into a Solemn, uh, Solemn Scolding. Again, these uh, the Solemn Scolding is extremely strong because you don't need to play a lot of other traps. You just need to negate one or two of the key cards, like evenly matched. Uh, you have that option. Super, super good. Not a card that was very popular when it came out because people are traditionally used to playing, if they're playing trap cards, they're going to play a lot of them. Yeah. And then, of course, Scolding is very, very bad. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a huge, it's a huge dent in your own life points, 3,000. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, it had, it had a time when it was good. Um, it had a time when it was good, but it's it's very niche, really, really niche. Yeah, I don't really want to be Hayden right now. Yeah. Like uh, those openings, there's the... We got, uh, quick, well, we got Quick Fix Machine Dupe, right? Yeah, which is probably the... And he hasn't used his normal sum to, to deploy this, so this is the best opening two-card combo in the entire constructed format at this time. Let's see where we go. So, you know, again, these, these spiral decks, it's all about the, 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 you know, large combination of cards that you can play um, it's as this combo develops. You go into each game with a with a ideal setup, and essentially you're just trying to maneuver your five-card hand into getting into that same setup every time. Yeah. There's not really a lot of variance with it, which is why it's kind of... It is fragile in the sense that if you're do actually manage to play over their board. They, they don't really have a way of getting back because they've put, yeah. committed everything into this one setup. Yeah. Uh, but again, Hayden, like his next turn is awful. It entirely depends on what he draws off the top of his deck. Yeah. Something good to see um, that the players are starting to immediately put the monsters where they where they want them in, yep. in the zones. We're uh, not going to get caught by Deco Talker here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Eracles uh, in a much, in a very much a commanding position here. He yeah. Rearrange those top three, and then, uh, yep, Hayden is going to throw in the towel. Just uh, he knows he's not going to be able to play into that field, regardless of whatever card he draws. Doesn't have the evenly match. Doesn't have um, any kind of mass removal. Uh, he's not even playing any. Doesn't have any hand traps, so he's not doing anything. And the drone is going to rearrange oh. and make sure that Hayden's next card is not useful. So he yeah. already is holding... He knows the cards. He basically knows what cards he has. I'm holding five normal summons. You've just put the worst possible card on top of my deck. There is absolutely no chance I'm going to beat a machine duplication quick fix start. Frozen towel, and this time Hayden gets to go first. Um, which uh, that means he gets to put his setup up, and Eric also just has to see whether he gets the hand traps to stop uh, Spiral getting there. Yeah. Um, I actually think that the uh, set rotation build is generally better for going first. Uh, because you have the extra extra access. Wow, that was hard to say. Extra access to uh, Spiral Resort and locking out your opponent's uh, field zone without forcing them to commit into a Ancient Fairy Dragon. Yeah. Or having to have the Twin Twisters as a result, as an out. And of course, bringing in Twin Twisters when you haven't seen your opponent uh, play set rotation yet is always a risk. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want it, like, especially a card like that where it's essentially dead in the wall. You are putting a else. blank in your deck unless they start set rotation. Yeah, and it's at least with some, you know, some other, I'm not saying, you know, m most kind of side deck cards are useful in one specific situation, but stuff like Twin Twisters is absolutely, you know, you don't want to be playing that at all. It's, it's almost like you're bringing, if they are playing set rotation, it's, it's, uh, it's great. But you're almost bringing it in and hoping that your opponent also has like the scoldings and stuff because you don't want to be hitting the artifact sanctums, the artifact scythes, with the twin twister. Yes, you've got access to the resort, but then you are also shooting blind at the uh, face down cards, which can be a disaster, especially when it seems everybody's very hot on this uh, artifact sanctum and scythe for uh, the LLDS. Yeah. It's going to be Hayden to start on game three. when these guys have finished sliding up.
So in case you wonder what the uh, meta breakdown is for uh, the LLDS uh, fi uh, the finals here, uh, it's exactly what you expect. Um, one true Draco, one trick star, three invoked, and the rest is spiral. That's that's your breakdown. Uh, how many players are we running today, Luke? Is that 23? Um, I believe it's 23 players total. Yeah, 23. I think we just had we had 24 players total, and one of them couldn't make it. Yeah, one of them unfortunately couldn't be here. Um, we wish them all the best. Um, but yeah, we're running 23 players, so five, like 18 spiral decks. Yes, yeah, so you can actually see um, Ericos didn't uh, didn't really attend too many WCQ tournaments yet. Did he not? No. Was this uh, this season or last season? The the last last season, 2016 to 2017 season. Yeah, it's not thinking about this. Yeah, that's not the overlapping ones. Um, but he did do really well during the WCQ in Utrecht. It was he had a 75 percent winner show. Oh, really so he made the top cut. Yeah, pretty good. He he was twenty sixth, which in in terms of the top, top thirty two. Yeah, when he gets to top cut, it's around the top thirty two. But it, whatever number it is, plus to to get to whatever the next top bracket is. Sure, and yeah, okay. So what was his overall win percentage for the whole season? It was sixty nine percent from the whole of last season. That's pretty strong. Uh, yeah. How many tournaments was that though? Uh, just six tournaments. Yeah, okay. It's a bit of a bit of a small sample size compared to some of the Titans that we've seen. Yeah, and we'll get to talk about it a little bit later. But 69%. That honestly, uh, when playing Yu-Gi-Oh, oh, we are going to see a machine duplication start from Hayden. We'll talk about the stats a little later. Let's get on with the game that you guys actually came here to see. Um, machine duplication start. Um, good news is, is Ericos does have the Ghost from Winter Cherries and the Draw and Lockbird. So he's got two hand traps, so he can actually shut down the spiral deck. The question is, how does he choose to do this? Yeah, Hayden also holding, uh, wow, two draw lock birds, one ash blossom. There, we're going to see Droll Lockbird dropped from Ericos. That's going to prevent any f further searching from Hayden. And Winter Cherries is going to rip the double helix, most likely, from this situation. Yes, those will be the double helixes being uh, removed from the game. That's going to make Hayden's start a little tricky. Uh, he's still got places to go. Um, in actual fact, even if Hayden chooses to start with the Borlo Dragon, uh, Ericos has the Gofu. Uh, so he could potentially make his own Borlo, then steal his opponent's Borlo, and then steal another one of uh, Hayden's guards and run them all into him. So yeah, that would be bad. The, what, what he got away with in game one, uh, not necessarily going to work. Well, it's not going to work here. And with no double helix, uh, he's essentially playing the pre-circuit break build, build of Spiral Deck. Yeah, which uh, was not optimal. It was when he had, uh, oh, he just pa decides to pass here. Uh, that's Ericos with set rotation, Spiral Resort, and Gofu. So Ericos definitely has places to go here, right? Uh, yes, although Hayden does have the Drawn Lock Grid and the Joy Spring, so he can shut down two searches or s summon from the deck. One summon from the deck and or two searches. Uh, he's got... Uh, Hayden's got a lot he can um, block this turn. Eric is just uh, considering his lines here. Uh, searching with the Spiral Resort. Hayden just 
calmly waiting for his windows to throw down those hand traps and try and blank Eriklis' turn, or at least uh, minimize the damage. Yeah. Spiral fix quick. Uh, spiral quick fix. Being he he fixes up. things quick, Matt. He fixes things quick. <laughs> yes, he does. Also, not once per turn. No. You're welcome, guys. <laughs> you were last uh, the WCQ in uh, Berlin. Yeah. Uh, we're going to see Gofu coming in. <laughs> Some awesome tokens there. Oh, from uh, the token the token booth. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out which event. It's usually got the event on them. They've got actually... I can see that they've got a... They've got a... Uh, a rescue cat, <laughs> a giant card in that top token. <laughs> Can you see it? Yeah. I'm trying I'd to think which event that was. Probably after Duelist Saga. I can't remember if, if we made a giant... No, maybe, that might have been a very long time ago, but I believe that was before we were making, creating these tokens. Alright, well Luke has a ponder yeah. of that. Um, let's see. So we've got... Go through two tokens. He's got rid of one of the tokens to go for the Link Spider. I like Link Spider. It's just that perfect kind of gateway Link one. Uh, arguably, it was the best Link monster in the starter deck uh, for quite the longest time because of uh, yeah. Gofu being un uh, unlimited in TCG, not in the OCG. Um, giving you those access to Link Spiders and easy access to Deco Talker or pretty much anything you want to go into. Yeah. Without using your normal summon. Very importantly. Yeah. yeah, so we still have a normal summon for Ericos here. And there it is on Quick Fix. Yeah, good. Let's um, use it. Yep, uh, he's just going to pick apart all of uh, Hayden's Quick fixes. Uh, Hayden could always pick up a super agent and then get all his quick fixes back. Is this going to be a borrow load? He probably is a four material. You're not going to put firewall just in the zone. Yeah, borrow load. Oh, this could be. That's a side rotation. So this could be quite risky because there's been no drone from Ericos to sort uh, Hayden's cards out. Mm -hmm. um, if. Hayden does manage to find his way over to a super agent. He can get all of his quick fixes back. I think that was a super agent. But it looks ultra rare. I, I was just looking at his face reaction cam. <laughs> that probably so was. So I actually missed the card that he drew. Uh, and he can make his it own. It was a super agent. <laughs> <laughs> That's a game changer. Yeah, he's probably going to stack the set rotation. Oh, actually, do you go set rotation, or do you just give him the hand trap and say, yes, yeah, it's going to be way too late? Give him double summon. He's only got one card in hand. There's uh, no possible way for him to utilize double summon next turn. He's got Spiral Resort, so he can oh, draw, okay, draw yeah, the yeah, card. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. No, yeah. no, well, actually, because you know, if he knows his opponent has no monsters in his hand, you're right. He only gets access to one monster next turn, yeah. so you give him the double summon, it does nothing. He's, yeah, that's about as dead Unless as you actually, no, 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 it does do something. Summon get your quick, quick fix, fix, get drone. Get another one, yeah, yeah, Double yeah, summon, yeah, helix. Don't give him double summon. Yeah, don't, don't <laughs> give him double summon, Luke. Why, why, why are you bad, Luke? I know. Uh, That's not how you get an 82% win rate. No, absolutely not. Luke's win rate is not at 82% at all. Oh, he drew a spiral. There it is, spiral super agent. I told you he's... He did. I for a second forward, it was sleeper. My bad. I told you it was super agent. That might just be because... He nailed it. Yeah. That's, that's extremely good for him. And then it turns all of his cards into his hand into quick fixes. Yeah. There's a set rotation coming down. Uh, set rotation is so, so good. Judge question. At the, uh, oh, he did give him double summon. He did. Oh, yeah. Good. I don't know if that's actually a mistake. He could have gave him the uh, Ash Blossom um, and been in a really good shape next turn to actually win over two turns. Well, I guess so, because his opponent can still go Spiral Resort, search for 
uh, sleeper, summon sleeper, banish three cards, and then have the ash blossom. That would that would have still been good. So that makes sense. Uh, yeah, he's already played his ball, though, dragon. But he can then go double helix decode. The spiral deck has many options, Luke. Yeah, this, it has this many is options. I'm trying to think it's of all a, the different it's lines. A, it's a big tree. I'm, I'm trying to think of all the different lines that uh, would make sense, but yeah, there's just so many. So he set himself spiral resort. I can only assume. Yeah, and of course he shuffled his deck as well. So uh, the spiral super agent might actually miss. Oh, that's big. Yep, because he put the spell on. Oh, uh, but he has big red. Uh, oh, but then he can't get that super agent into play. There is actually no way for him to do that. Wow, that is actually huge. I'm wondering if he should have just normal summoned the agent and then just brought back the free quick fixes, discarding the drone. Yeah. Um, because he didn't have to sneak the agent into play. No, he absolutely didn't. But then he was like, oh, I get to take out my opponent's spell trap as well. I can take out that resort. Yeah. But this, was, know, this play was pretty weak to... If you feel behind, like if you feel behind, which is never something, you know, it's never a kind of objective thing. If you, if you feel behind, then you want to try and take as many risks as you can. Yeah. I mean, as I try to think should, about the ways that could have gone wrong. If he went for the back row, it could have been Artifact Sanctum, get Scythe, blank your turn. He goes for the resort. The resort, he can see. He knows if he gets his card off, he takes away the second field spell, I believe it was. Yeah. Uh, is it the second? First. That would have been the first field spell. The set rotation puts up the second. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you just hit the first one, yeah. And then he can go ahead and try and make his, uh, make his play. But Yeah, suddenly Hayden realizes that this is... This is pretty short-lived turn after that, after that set rotation. A hard shutdown. Yeah, I guess the only way is for you to big red into quick fix here and then try and make something of it. There's nothing you can really make into it, to be honest. Uh, that yeah, pass. Uh, of course, we have double resort here, so he does ac access to. Uh, Sleeper and last resort if he needs it. Yeah, and then he can take out. He can put 5,800 well, points of damage into the field whilst yeah. having quick uh, spell speed two, uh, quick effect removal. Yeah, and barrel, uh, boral load to back it up. Sorry, well, I lost one of the resort effects to an ash, but still. Yeah, sure. So he's not going to be able to get that, but he could still go for the sleeper if he wanted to. But that might be a liability actually. Okay, miss. Oh, maybe not miss. Uh, I, yeah. But maybe not. It's hard for us to know what. <laughs> he could have just normal summoned it afterwards. Ah, uh, possible. Yeah, well, he didn't destroy the spell card. Not that he would, but. And quick fix. Last resort, I believe, is what he's hovering. He's just checking his post graveyard. We've seen the ash has gone down. Uh, yeah. If he has last resort to his hand, uh, we're probably going to see a drawn lock board. Uh, come down from Hayden immediately. Oh wait, he's got no cards. In, he's got no cards in hand, and his resort has been. The, that's his second resort that he's using to search for, right? So you don't need to. You don't need to draw. That makes no sense. Oh wait, no, no, no. You can still draw because he makes double helix. Wow, there's just so much you can do. Yeah, the, <laughs> the spiral deck's crazy. Oh, good thing we're practicing on a Friday in time for the YCS. Yeah, well, people are going to be seeing this on a Saturday already, so... Yeah, I know, but it's good. For me, it feels like it's in the future. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're basically time travelers at this point. Yeah, but not like the time lords. You can be... Which time lord do you want to be? I'll be lazy on. Lazy on? Yeah. Why, why do you want to be lazy on? I don't on? know. Something about that name feels like it really... Associates with me sometimes. Like like lazy or lasers? Either. Either. <laughs> lazy lasers. Both, both of those. <laughs> That's why it's kind of laser. It's like, yeah, I've got this death beam. But yeah, well, so I was don't worry. Thinking, I was thinking like death Don't worry. Beam. I, I'm actually going to take a nap first. Yeah. So I'm gonna, when I come back, I'm going to obliterate everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to death beam all you guys, but but, but I, I need to sleep first. <laughs> and actually, unfortunately, Lazy On is awful to play in this format because you just put all the spiral resources straight back in their deck. <laughs> um, well, I'm going with Metion. Metion was the first. 
So he's still actually pretty good. Um, and he's got big eyes on his face as well. Problem is, is, is your opponent starts with uh, uh, if they start with Firewall Dragon, they can still target him and bounce him. Yeah. Sorry, return him to your hand. Um, but if you could get away with Meteon, uh, just taking away the whole field, that would have been that would have been pretty cool. Yeah. The terribly tired Tapir, uh, number 41, 41 is up. Let's see if we can bring up. Bagzuka. Uh, no, nope, can't bring that up. Uh, yeah, that's probably going to be Hayden getting eliminated. Uh, getting Well, not eliminated, but losing his duel here. I, I find it very hard for him to come back now. Yeah. Both of these guys are currently EXO, so... Oh, there's only been one round, so... Yeah, you can, you can drop one. Yeah, yeah, you go, you go. Xbox still potentially make the top four, in, in a small size tournament like this. Yeah, there'll, there'll be like two X ones, and then three. No, it'll be three X ones. It all depends on draws and things as well. If there's any draws, but yeah. Gas comes in, gets his uh, super agent. Bagzuka's uh, super, like super Bagu interesting. Baguska. Baguska, sorry. Baguska. I just think of Bazooka because that's kind of what it is. It turns all your, all your guys that like, run for cover when he's just rocking out there on the field. Yeah. Baguska, the terribly tired Tapia. Yeah, he's he obviously just come back from a YCS himself. Yes. <laughs> yes. Probably one in the Netherlands. Any particular reason? I wouldn't like to expand on my point. <laughs> so we see uh, Big Red. <laughs> he's just tired, Luke. That's, that's he's, terri it he's terribly tired. I can I can really understand him. Okay. <laughs> just like Lazion can. They're good guys. They're good guys. Good, guys. <laughs> good set of guys. And yep, uh, we're going to be seeing uh, some more spiral nonsense coming out. Do we have many? Do we have many number monsters left? Are there any like? The current prize card. Oh, you mean ones that we haven't released? Yeah. Yeah. If you if you uh, want to hop on over to some of the fan forums, you probably find a lot of hate mail complaining at uh, me for not doing the rest of them. Yeah. You'll find you'll find the numbers that are missing. Yeah. Work in progress, guys. You know, we'll math it. mathematically, we could have done 33 f over three years. But why not keep it interesting? Yeah. That's why I look at it anyway. Yeah. That uh, I, I I don't know if, if um like bringing them out sequentially would that would have that ever made sense I don't think so it would have been less cool it like when you get to shout like the first one you get is number thirty nine Utopia and you're like oh there's yeah. at least thirty nine then yeah I guess so every time every time we brought one out that was higher and higher it was like oh there's that many of them oh well I actually he said it at, um, beginning of Zexel so we kind of spoiled that immediately yeah oh he's, does he does he say how many numbers no. Astral says it at some point. I believe it's after he acquires uh, number 17, Leviathan Dragon. Okay. There you go. Well, Hayden's making the best of uh, a best, the best of a Baguska field here. Yeah. Oh, this is this is strong. He can go his Boral load, steal his, his opponent's, opponent's Boral, then take his opponent's um, double helix, then during main phase two, guess correctly on the double helix, and carry on. That is super strong. See, Boral load Dragon, as I said. Probably one of the the best cards and the, the MVPs in these matchups. Yeah, uh, you've you've got your ridiculous combo, but how do you get out of this mess? Yeah, sunglasses, Luke. Yeah, we got to put them on. Ericos here is looking um, distinctly disturbed about this situation. Yeah, he takes the borrow load. Oh, thank you, and look at all my pretty arrows to the side right here. Yeah, I wonder where he's going to go. Seems terribly with that. unfortunate for you, my friend. Um, if he takes the double helix, he actually can't make any more attacks. And actually, this way, he shuts his opponent's next <laughs> turn down. I like how Ericos is just like, well, if you want it, you take it. <laughs> no, I'm not you passing it a, to I'm you. I'm not passing it to you. <laughs> you take this card. Uh, actually, he would have had a successful attack if he'd have took the um, double helix because he could have used both his Boral Low Dragons to drop the uh, Bagzuka in the damage step. Ah, uh, yeah. So he yeah, could have actually got over that. I think Bagzuka is probably... Well, it shut, uh, holding on to it uh, really hinders Ericus's turn. Hayden, yeah. no cards in hand. He's all in. Wait, yeah. no, he's holding. 
That's uh, his graveyard. He's fine. Yeah, that's his graveyard. I was about to no, say. No, Hayden's got no no cards in hand. His uh, field is simply two barrel loads and Baguska as well. Uh, when that loads in finally, but yeah, it's there's there's really not a lot going on for Hayden's hand right now. But his field is quite exciting. Yeah, unfortunately, at the end of this turn, he's going to end up sending those cards to the graveyard. But uh, that still puts Erikos in a really bad position this turn. Yeah. Boral load, taking your Boral load. It's not been that brutal since the big eye, big eye of Dragon Rulers. <laughs> yeah. I always loved that. It was like whoever made their big eye last. Guesses. Oh, and trap card. Trap card on the top. That no artifact sanctum gives no him even, that. gives uh, Hayden even more time when he goes for the scythe. Um, so that's essentially Erikus' next two turns are uh, going to be uh, massively hindered. Yeah. Boral load dragon is just so good. Oh, I love this card. This card is great as a as a four material link monster. I really like uh, topological bomber dragon as well, but that doesn't just unfortunately doesn't see as much play. Yeah, and I I, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna put put it on the line right now that at some point that card is gonna see a lot of play. I've just got a feeling. It gets played in a lot of degenerate... I shouldn't say degenerate. I say cool combo strategies. It ends up being FTKs. Yeah. Um, because of the... It's not once per turn when it keeps clearing the field. Yeah. Uh, just trying to remember which one you play it with. It's... Um, is it one of the Chrysalis monsters? It's like a seed. I forget the name of the card. Um, but it... Yeah, you can essentially just keep bringing it back and banishing plants from the graveyard. And right, right, right. Under. I forget the name. I do apologize. I'm sure somebody in chat's already screaming it several times. But... We're in yesterday, so I can't read your yeah. message. Oh, yeah, we're in the past. We're in the past right now, which is pretty cool. Got to get back. Um, yeah, but topological, I actually really like the, the burn effect is super relevant, can be super relevant as well, even yeah. from a losing position, where if your opponent's like sub 3,000 life and life points, and you're just like, actually, I can just uh, sneak this in. But it's a case of, again, finding room uh, in people's already very stacked extra decks. Yeah, Paguska is just so cool. He's all right. He's a good lad. He's a good lad. <laughs> Would, here's a question, Luke. Do you think as the format develops, people will start going up to two Borolo Dragons? Ooh. Or do you think there'll never be room? No, I think there's uh, it, with with a with an interaction like this, there's always room. There's always room to be made. I remember you you had to play multiple big guys back in Dragon Ruler format for the for that exact interaction. So when they go, big eye, big eye, take your uh, fan, uh, Mecha Phantom Beast. Uh, yeah. I forget the rest of the card name. And then Phantom like, Beast, Dracosac. And then your turn, you go, hmm, big eye, big eye, big eye. Yeah, put Dracosac. all the big guys on my side of the field. But you never really wanted to have more than more than two big guys on your side of the field, because then you can't play Dracosac's effect to get tokens. Yeah, and then you also can't attack, can you, because uh, with the big eyes. Yeah, exactly. That was That was a really fun format. I think everybody remembers things differently. Uh, I was not playing uh, Dragon Rulers at the at the time. I was a Spellbook fanboy. Okay, I was actually playing Gadgets back then. I just started playing playing after uh, being at university. Ah, back in the day, university was a long time ago for me. Feels like a long time ago for me now. Really, really. Yeah. It's uh, really funny. The other day, uh, my 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 boss got a picture of me from the first day I started at Konami. Uh, Do you look the same? <laughs> I, he, he he thinks I look old. <laughs> that's uh, you knowing him better better than better than the guys at home. That's an even funnier statement. <laughs> and yeah, we're gonna see the uh, double helix full load master plan. Consider making Gaia here for a favorable arrows. Yeah, and then he can actually get oh. He can also get the um, he'll get the resort which he can't use because he's currently under set rotation. But he could get the sleeper. Uh, he can't go Ningrisu. Ningrisu requires link monsters as materials. So does he play the Gaia? Does Hayden play the Gaia? Let's stop looking at the wrong list. Yes, he does. He does play Gaia the Lightning. Yeah, Denver. I think you have to, right? Because because you can't always go into Ningrisu. This is true. Uh, but he could he could also go D Deco Talker. I just wondered if he'd go for the. Uh, Gaia because the uh, Deco Talker wouldn't have any favorable arrows or yeah. any way to use the protection effect. No, some nice arrows there. And the resort, which is not going to be able to be used, and Sleeper, 
And we know the face-time card's going to be Artifact Sanctum, which is going to get yeah. Artifact Scythe. And Erikos is going to be facing down the barrel of a ridiculous amount of damage in his following turn. In fact, yeah. that's five, uh, five, six, seven thousand eight hundred damage. I'm coming up. That's with. a lot of damage. I think so. If I'm doing the math right, but I might be wrong. I, I, I do suck it. Long I ago, think. I chose. I, I kind of only if I'm super sure do I do math on stream because I just. The problem is with with having Marcello now. I don't know if you know Marcello is actually a mathematician. That's that's what he's he's uh, doing at university. I'd make a joke about growing a grey beard, but who you've probably already done that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah done that, cool. done that. And then okay. Um, so like, whenever I try and add things up on stream and stuff, he's just like quantum calculating it in his brain, <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, yeah. He okay. Just goes back, goes, Luke, it's so simple, and he's like written over the whole desk. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I mean, he, he's. That's why he loses in three turns. Yeah, he's destroyed a number of our desks. <laughs> Fortunately, uh, the camera doesn't always catch the desk. Just comes about this gigantic equation. Just says spiral wins. <laughs> yeah, we got Marcello a uh, a whiteboard so he could just you know over and over again write his formulas instead of writing them on the table. He just came. He just had a fantastic performance at YCS Dallas actually. I think. Um, Marcello. Yeah, I think he finished top sixteen. Did he go? I didn't. I didn't know. That yeah, was. yeah, he was over. He was over in Dallas. So I saw it in uh, the coverage, and I was uh, really just uh, having my morning coffee, and I was just like, he's he's in Dallas. Yeah, I. That's same reaction. I actually, I was speaking to him just yesterday. He was like, "Oh, looking forward to seeing you in London." I was like, oh, "Okay, cool. He's going up to London." But he was in Dallas last weekend. Yeah, that's. that's they must have flown directly from Dallas to London. Yeah, he's already on his run for the World Championship points. Yeah, oh, I think he really wants to go back. He really, really wants to go back. Ah, but that was kind of heartbreaking. He was so close to making it into the final, the yeah. finals uh, there. And I think he knows it. He he knows that. He so. I think he believes in his heart. He he would he could have won that tournament. Yeah. I think he does. Well, so as as we said uh, just a couple of minutes ago, the Sanctum here bringing out Scythe, and that's going to lock down the extra deck. I remember when Scythe came out, everyone really underrated it. It was it was seen as like the bad moral attack. Yeah, all we you know the the because um, it was TCG exclusive when it came out, right? That is correct. Yeah, and it was the the um, it was the promo card, and everyone was like, oh yeah, okay, we got a you know a TCG exclusive. It's not that strong. Uh, let's you know let's ignore that, and we'll we'll make our Artifact, um, trap trick, hands decks, just the same as uh, as we always as we saw from Japan, and yeah, and just it just got ignored for for ages. So long ago, back in 2014, I actually don't remember the develop the development of that format. I do remember we had four different decks in the top four. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, we had uh, Nicola Lennon. No, no, that's what he's called on Facebook. Like Nicolo I, I like Masolini. I say his name was right, 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 right. Yeah, I see. I said it. I said it. Nicola Masolini. That's his name. Uh, yeah, he was playing Spellbook. There was someone playing Light Swan, someone playing Mermail, and someone playing... Uh, Bujin. Bujin, that was it. Yeah, oh, he may have been playing Bujin. Anyway, yeah, we had four different decks all in the top cut of the uh, Amsterdam WCQ. Uh, first live stream. It was, in fact, yes. With the boats behind you. Remember that? I uh, I do have memories of that. Yeah, <laughs> the boats. There was a, there was a subway right next to the venue. They were they were they were really happy that weekend. Ah, uh, well, I accidentally stole someone's sandwich. And, uh, oh yeah, you stole my sandwich. I completely. Oh, it was your, it was your sandwich. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's been bothering me for years because I, I knew I ended up with someone else's sandwich. I just had no idea who. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, what happened? We ordered we all ordered sandwiches and then um, yeah. So. The judges ordered sandwiches. They didn't get your order. They brought our order, and then you ate it. <laughs> well, uh, that poor we dragon place. can't target the sleeper because of resort. Yeah, so that's yeah. As oh, okay, that's actually brutal. It looks like it's swinging back to Eric. Yeah. Um, well, the thing is, we just kind of ordered the same thing, and then when it came, uh, they came over. Uh, it was just sort of on the side. I was like, oh, coverage food. Rawr, 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 rawr. No, man, and it looks like, where's my food? I've been like, I haven't eaten in like six hours. It was like, <laughs> um, don't know. What did you order? <laughs> Rob ate it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it seems Erikos is um, really just living to die another day in this match here. And, yeah, he, he's been able to claw it back. I'll never say never, my friend. Uh, there's a chance that uh, Hayden can still get into this. I believe Hayden has in his hand a sleeper agent. He does indeed. So he's he's got a reasonable hand to be able to... Uh, Come back here. Well, the question is, does he have any targets other than itself that he can he can use? Because he can't play the resort while he's under the uh, set rotation mode. Uh, 
I would actually thought uh, Hayden was going to get got, there with the ball. He's got mission, one of the missions. Ah, that's actually pretty cool. Um, I wonder if he does choose to actually use its uh, on-field effect. Ah, yeah. actually, no, that, that actually makes sense. You can, you can, if he sets it, so, um, summons the sleeper agent, can attack over double helix. If his opponent uses his sleeper, he clears his own field and then gets back the helix. Hayden has a chance of losing um, at that point because I think we're on the third resort from Ericos, and Ericos has burned through quite a lot of resources. Yeah, and then he can set the mission. Um, yeah, he could do that. But if he sets the mission here, there's uh, if he sets the mission here, there's a chance that uh, Ericos decides to target his own sleeper agent, take out the two cards. And then um, gets his agent, gets a, a super agent, which can be Helix or a super agent. Uh, but then Hayden would also also get something out of that. And he'd also get the um, engrave effect of rescue. Super complicated interactions. Yeah, it seems that our card app uh, is lagging behind a bit. Yeah, there's yeah, it's, uh, not, it's not uh, updating quite as we would expect. Uh, yep, and that's Oracle the Zephyr cleared. Yeah, so at least now uh, Hayden can do something. Yeah, Hayden gets back a uh, super agent when his uh, sleeper is destroyed. The question is, is he going to be able to do anything when uh, Ericos can threaten another two cards away from him yeah. with his sleeper agent? I think he has a helix in there, right? Or did he get he got caught by the ash this game, didn't he? So he doesn't yeah. actually have helixes. So he needs a super agent in his graveyard to resolve. Yeah. Sleeper is definitely just from the graveyard, right? Or can you get from the deck? So I'd we have to check the text out. Yeah, right? we have a we have an appeal going on here. We're just restarting our card up while we're having an appeal. So yeah, so for those who don't know, uh, if there's some discrepancy between the two players, then. Uh, you know the judges will will come and try and fix that. And at any point, the players are allowed to say, "Okay, well, I, you know, I don't agree with your decision. I would like to speak with the head judge." And yeah, they're specially chosen for their their knowledge of rulings and you know player interaction and that kind of stuff. So the head judge will come over and be able to sort the situation out. They put down the final ruling, and that ruling must be accepted. Yeah, that's that's how it works. Cannot even be overturned by a Konami representative. In, in fact, that is true. Yeah, we uh, we give the give the head judges the power to. Uh yeah. Okay, we're back up to date now, so we can see. Yeah, in Hayden's hand, he got oh, scolding and rescue. That scolding is awful. Yeah, scolding is really really good in really niche situations. Uh, as I said earlier, but well, the scolding is particularly awful when you're only sitting on fourteen hundred life points. Oh, oh yeah, well yeah. It's <laughs> unlike solemn judgment, you can always play solemn judgment. Solemn judgment is way too good, like yeah. way, way, way too strong. Um, it's actually interesting because it's still legal in the OCG, and yeah. um, it's just such a good card. Yeah. Obviously, it's it's not been relevant in the TCG for a while, but a fun ruling that if you're on one life point, you can still play solemn judgment, and uh, due to the way that the game works when you get half a life point you get one back no 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 I, d I, I disagree with that because when Yugi played against the Golden Castle of Stormberg he couldn't send exactly half of his deck to the graveyard when it had one card in it ergo it destroyed itself as it does well, d mm. I say that contradicts with your ruling I don't think it does life points and cards are doing different things Yugi should have just ripped a card in half and got it got the job done well I suppose I shouldn't be taking too many rulings seriously out of a a brain control and a damage step when that was a standard play yeah. in Battle City. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so uh, 
whatever that appeal was, don't have the information, but it like, was resolved. So here we go. So Hayden gets back his agent. And suddenly, quick fix. Okay, so this is uh, Hayden's going to have to make a pretty big comeback here. Yeah. Well, as you know, a super agent is always extra super when he's got his quick fix with him. Uh, yeah, both plays here on really low resources, though. Yeah, the issue is uh, we're currently in end of match procedure, and Hayden is on a massive deficit. In fact, any any tons further attack, tons of time, <laughs> loads of time. It's, it's like five turns. I think Hayden is literally uh, one of one of Ericus's battle uh, battle phases away from losing. Unless he can put something out that's actually going to get him there. Yeah, I think he does. I think he's got enough here. He can't use. He can't get to the drone to get over the sleeper because only the sleepers in play. Can see Princess Sprite. Oh no, Dulhan. No, he is going for Princess Sprite. He doesn't actually play Dulhan. I probably could have seen that had I looked at his deck list. Dulhan's fantastic though. I'm surprised people, more people aren't playing. Wow, Princess Sprite got him one for one. That scolding suddenly became really useful. Uh, he needs to scout a monster. With, oh, is it a monster? Uh, yeah. With one for one. That's, see, look, that's one of those restrictions that I just never remember. Ever, 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 ever. Oh, yeah, yeah, because it's one monster for one. Interesting one for how monster. he decides to go with the proxy dragon. Well, he had one card in hand, and he would have had Quick Fix and Graveyard. He could have had the free material. Uh, that's not a super agent. Banishing two spiral cards. Add back super agent. Normal summon. Yeah, now he can get his quick fix. Yeah, <laughs> goes to discard a drone again. He's actually not going to play the card I 100% can't play. Because, yeah, you, oh, we got utility wire. Utility wire strong. Hayden's moving really quick here. How <laughs> you just struggling to keep up with him? <laughs> Another quick fix. That's another four materials. Proxy dragon. No borrow load. Borrow load. That second borrow load. Yeah, <laughs> would have been good. The, the second borrow load right now would have been really, really good. That would have got 28. And um, then in this situation, actually, it's get even nastier because you take, you take their sleeper agent, you hit them with it. During their turn, regardless of what they do, you can target the uh, sleeper agent in your opponent's card. You destroy them. The sleeper agent then triggers in the graveyard because yeah. he's been destroyed. Cleans out the opponent's fill. Yeah. Firewall Dragon, making his first appearance here at the LLDS. No, it's not. Actually, that's a lie. That was a Soul Charge earlier. My bad. Yeah. Yeah, that was. Interesting choice to go with the Firewall, that he's not mutually linked. Yeah. Well, maybe he's just using it to recover more cards. Well, he can't if he hasn't got any mutual links. Yeah, I would think that he would continue to link someone and at least try and... Well, I'm trying to think of what he could do for up arrows based on what he has, because his... Let's see, up arrows, Ningrisu, Deco Talker. Those are the only cards he has with an up arrow. Right, okay. Then I'm a little confused. I guess it's just because he wanted to make a, a, a link for monster and he didn't have another borrow load. Uh, and then Hayden passing, but... Well, this has really gone back and forth. Yeah, kudos to Eric uh, not panicking after the whole the double ball exchange. Yeah, absolutely. He's been able to keep his calm throughout this whole thing, and right now he is he is currently winning. He's got way more life points. Like I actually thought uh, Hayden was going to get there with his ball load. Um, but no, it's uh, Ericos is uh, making a come, uh, made, turned it around yet again, and is yeah. now. So we're gonna see the utility wire. Uh, yeah, you can't target. Uh, 
Yeah, he goes for the targets and then he just responds, kills himself, takes out two of his opponent's cards, and then gets to bring back. Uh... What's he doing now? It's hard to see what he's going to get back. I think that's last resort. It's super hard to thing. tell. Yeah, I could have died. I just thought it was ultra. I didn't know which one it would be. Most likely a super agent. Yeah, I mean, Hayden's kind of struggling here. Both players are. Erikos does have Destruder, though. That's a new card. Uh, just releasing Circuit Break and also Hot Tech in the Spiral deck. Yeah. I, I actually really like this card. No, oh, walk us through. What does it do? So, um, similar to what we were talking about earlier, the Solemn Judgment. So if it's in, the, in your hand or the graveyard, you can pay off your life points. Uh, to target a level 6 or lower monster you control and then special summon the Deshruder from hand and the card level gets reduced, the, the, the Deshruder gets reduced by the level of the monster that you, you targeted. The key part of that whole thing is that you get to basically special summon this large dragon tuna monster. And then when it gets destroyed, uh, actually it sort of leaves the field, it gets put on the bottom of the deck instead so it keeps coming back. Yeah, it's really cool. And it looks awesome as well. Hey, we can just use Gofu to make free uh, free blockers. Uh, block free attacks. But you can always send a card with last resort to the graveyard to get a direct attack in. But I... Actually, if Hayden gets the drone, he could get a pretty big attack in, actually. If he's going to try and go for a direct attack. Plus 1,500. I don't know if it gets... I don't think it gets him there, though. 1,500 onto that. Depends if Erikos risks playing Destrudo here. No, that won't get him there. No, you, you, there's no. I don't think it's reasonable, especially after Scythe has been played. There's absolutely no way you're going to bring Destrudo down for half your life points when you're in the end of match procedure. Yeah. He's got, he's got a pretty big defense, uh, but not it's not worth half your life points. To no, the no, no. That could be, it's one of those things where, you know, you, you never know. Erikos here may end up now, so he just passes on over. Final turn. Okay, so Erikos here. Uh, I don't think he has any drones no, we, left we, anyway. We got a couple more turns. Are we? Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking top guard. Wait, am I? Oh no, no, yeah. Sorry, last turn. Yeah, he's gonna get. He's gonna get the final turn. This is his final battle phase. Yeah. Right? Yes, actually, you're correct. Yeah, Hayden's Hayden's last turn. We got one more turn for Erikos. Not that that helps Hayden, but yeah. Yeah, if Erikos is sitting in the lead, he's just gonna pass the turn and be like, "Yep, yeah, cheers, job done." Does he have any drones left? That's the question. He's been. So had he gone, uh, actually no, even if he'd gone for Topological Bomber Dragon when his opponent had the Sleep Agent, he would have still just destroyed them both. Yeah. He'd love Topological Bomber Dragon. <laughs> it's, it's a good card. It is. I think it's super niche. I, I, I do think there will be a format soon where it'll be good though. Burn is super relevant, especially when Destrudo is running, running it around. Yeah. He does look like he's running around in his card art, actually. Look at him. He's running. I never actually considered that, but I'll, you know, I'll, I'll keep an eye. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 I pay more attention than uh, than most to the to the card art. I like to I like to make up little stories about why why each card does what it does. Uh, you're you're in the fortunate group that you the, your first experience with a card is when you see the art and the effect. Yeah. I. I'd say it when it's uh, long before then. <laughs> yeah. They don't look as pretty in the early stages. Yep. Okay, go for another super agent. That's still not going to be good enough. You see Aiden is shaking his head. Yeah. I don't think he has any drones. Like, if he had the access to get the drone, he could have 1500 attack, get a direct attack in, but even then that wouldn't be enough.
upgrade and calls it a day. Wow. Okay, so that took quite some time, but in the end, uh, Erikos managed to come back from that double borrow load steal. It's, it's hard to say coming back properly because he was actually massively commanding from the beginning. Yeah. But then he does, as you said, he did get back from the double borrow. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit more about it in our post-match discussion. We're back. So, yeah, I mean, he, he kind of, right from the start of the game, yeah, he was in a really commanding position, and then Hayden kind of brought it back a little bit, and then back to Erikos again. Yeah, uh, the back and forth is spiral there, because uh, both players drew a reasonable number of hand traps to make sure the other player couldn't yeah. uh, set up as hard as they wanted to. Yeah, absolutely. And then so you kind of got into this grind fest, and it got to a simplified state very, very um, early on. Mm -hmm. um, excellent play by both of them there, being able to try and turn the tables yeah. with the smallest number of resources Yeah, I love seeing possible. games of Yu-Gi-Oh like that. You, 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 know, you don't see that anywhere else. Yu-Gi-Oh really allows that to happen, that shift of, of you know, resources and wouldn't been able to, you know, com just come back out of nowhere and things like that. Uh, really great. I f although I think Hayden knew he'd lost at the point where he consolidates four monsters into a fireball dragon but yeah, to do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, okay, I'm holding scoldings, so I can't do anything with. Yeah. I'll get my link four and I can't go anywhere with this. And do, you, just do you think that if he, if he had a second borrow load that, that would have made a, made a difference? That would have been huge in that situation because the sleeper yep. agent wouldn't have been able to take it out and he would have been able to get another 3,000 direct attack in. Yep. And then he would have been putting himself in a position to win. Yep. But he, he didn't have it. And again, it, it doesn't, that doesn't really explain what could happen throughout the rest of the tournament. If he did play the extra Borlo Dragon instead of, say, the extra Proxy Dragon in his extra deck, there's going to be yep. situations where he's going to wish he had that Proxy Dragon. Yeah. So but that one scenario, maybe the second one would have made it there. Yeah, it's, it's tough, isn't it? Especially when, when you know, the, you, we're having this exact conversation of, you know, do you want this, do you want that? You got to look at what is, you know, what's going to be most relevant for, for most of the time, and then that's that's what you go with. Yeah, uh, you've only got you've only got 15 slots, and yeah. they're pretty heavily fixed in this deck. Yeah. Um, so maybe maybe next time, maybe yeah. maybe tomorrow he goes. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna go get that second try, borrow. Try the borrow load instead. Okay, well, so that was round two of the the LLDS here. So we're gonna be right back with more live coverage from YCS London 2017. Catch you guys soon.